Hello everyone, it's Nady, and today we'll be testing out the Dragon Beauty Transformation Kit. As you beautiful people know, this is about the product, not the people behind it. Any tip you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy. Okay? Thank you. So, how is everyone? I hope you're having a marvelous day. Once again, it's a fucking gorgeous day outside, but hello windy. I legit had a marvelous hairdo ready for you. I took Ron outside to pee, nearly got swept away, and came back with just fucked hair. Didn't even get fucked. Except Except by Mother Nature and she is a rowdy bitch sip my chai tea. Mm. Anyways, I got this on my doorstep yesterday and I was just way too fucking tired to talk about it because I did kind of want to go a little bit in depth on my thoughts about this brand. I honestly don't really follow Nikita. I don't know much about her. I do know that she's absolutely beautiful and I think I follow her on Instagram and that's about it. But this is definitely one of those reviews where I'm sure you know way more about her than I do. Which isn't a bad thing. It just helps prove my point that this is about the products, not the people behind it. There is no room for any bias bullshit here. With that being said, really the only thing that I know about Nikita and this brand is the fact that she kind of launched this independently on her own, which hell yes, claps to fucking you, baby. When I launched my brand, I kind of put it out there to a much smaller community and it blew up completely. And so I can't even imagine with her following what she had to do to prepare for this. Like whether the products suck or not, there's a lot of time and a lot of money that goes into this shit. So I just have to give her props for that. But enough of that bullshit. I do have a few other things to say because I do get quite a few DMs and emails and comments asking about tips for starting your own company and I'm very happy to give a few while kind of critiquing this. Feel free to skip ahead, but I do want to open this and see what it looks like before I give my little tidbits of advice. Okay, so we have a Nikita Dragon $100 bill. That's kind of cute. In Pussy Stunt We Trust. Okay, is that some gay term that I'm not up to date with? I'm literally like a 90 year old, so bear with me. Anyway, this says Bank of Dragon. I don't know what this is about, but it's fun. Then we have the same picture that's on our website that is very lovely. I'm probably gonna give this to my brother to hang on the ceiling above his bed because I have absolutely no use for that. Now onto the egg. I'm getting serious Easter vibes. Oh shit, it's open. Okay, so this is what we get. Oh, okay. Wow, that feels a whole lot cheaper than it looked online. Although I guess on camera it doesn't look bad, but this is just like one of those Walmart Easter eggs that you pick up. For some reason, I just thought it was gonna be like super luxurious because we paid, what, 50 something dollars for this? Mm, oh, and I kind of like that her logo's on the bottom. That's kind of fun. And I mean, here we have it. It's, no, oh, fuck. Okay, guess you aren't supposed to tip that forward. We'll just put that in there. At least it wasn't the pressed powder. Like, I don't really care about this side. But yes, here we go. That actually is kind of cool, I guess. But let me just snap this together for a second and go into what I was going to say. So it is my belief, especially for brands that are just starting off independently, that you should come out with products where even if it's a totally blank ass component, people will still want it. Anyone can make pretty packaging, but it takes true business skills and real artistry to create a product that people really and truly want. Like people say that everything's been done in the makeup world, but there are actually really big gaps of missing products that people want. And then as your business grows and you get bigger, you do get a little bit more leniency as to always coming out with something brand new and original. But when you're first starting out, you better make damn sure that what you're coming out with hasn't been seen a million times before. Otherwise, people are gonna cancel your brand and the products and all the hard work that you put into it before it's even out. And I kind of feel like that's the case here. Like, even though you can tell that Nikita put a lot of time and effort and heart into this project, pretty much every post that I went to, like Trend Moods, they were all really, really negative in the comments. Which does kind of break my heart because I I do like supporting fellow young entrepreneurs, but at the same time, I am kind of hoping that this is a learning experience for her because it is legit business 101 to come up with something original. And not to throw shade or anything, but I legit have like 20 of these correctors. Literally the first thing that I thought of was this LA girl. This right here, I think you get this at Walgreens for $4. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one who thought that because I saw hundreds of comments mentioning this. But what I find that usually happens with my correctors is that when I apply this and then put foundation over it, the corrector kind of melts and discolors the foundation or concealer and then I have to apply even more foundation or concealer to correct the correction. And by the time I actually get the correctors covered up, I've applied so much concealer and foundation that had I applied that much in the beginning, I wouldn't have even needed the damn corrector. So in my gay humble opinion, the only thing that would actually make this worth $25 is one, if this fucking blows me and takes me to Taco Bell because 25 bucks for a corrector, that shit is redonkulous. And two, if it doesn't melt underneath liquid concealers and foundations. Because a lot of times I'll just use a burnt orange liquid lipstick and then set it with powder and I'll be all set. And if I 
$25 Wet n Wild lipstick is a lot cheaper than a $25 corrector. I am going into this with a totally open mind. I really hope it works. And I love the fact that she did kind of come out with something that's trans friendly, like to cover up stubble. I personally won't be using it to cover up my stubble because this bitch is not shaving. Really, the only time I use correctors is a tiny bit underneath my eyes and then to cover my brows. And so today we will use a little bit under the eyes, but I also do kind of want to cover my eyebrows drag style. I woke up today and wanted no brows and like a dark black glam eye. I actually have to start practicing the makeup for my models for my own eyeshadow palette promo shoots. And I always see like avant-garde black glossy eyes on the runway and I kind of want to recreate that today. You might just see it in some upcoming promos. But anyways, to me, honestly, and not that anybody's asking my opinion, but I think it would have made it so much more sense for this gorgeous gal to come out with like an egg-shaped eyeshadow palette of like five duo chromes or something. No, even better, multi-chromes because then it would kind of look like dragon scales or even a couple multi-chromed highlighters that had like scale indentations. Those to me would have been so visually pleasing and super like Instagram worthy. Just starting out with something visually impactful where you don't have to rely on packaging like this to sell it. Like she has beautiful promo videos and you can tell that a lot of the money went into the promos, which isn't a bad thing. Like promo is half the battle, but the other half is having a product to actually back the promo up. And just going off looks alone, I'm not quite sure that it was an even trade here. But let's go ahead and take a little more of a look at these. Okay, so I'm on the Dragon Beauty website. It looks great. It's nice and blue, but I'm very confused about the pricing here. Because if you get this with the egg, it's 55, but if you buy these separately, it's 60. Like, in what world does that make sense? I guess it's enticing you to buy both as a bundle. Actually, that does make sense, but I guess I just thought it'd be more because you're getting this fabulous, luxurious dragon egg. I'm gonna have to go to Dollar Tree after this and get more of these for Easter. Okay, I'm done shitting on the terrible packaging. But this Dragon Fire Skin Perfecting Potion retails for $25. This does actually have a really cute packaging. Like, I like this way more than the actual egg. And it looks like it's cruelty-free and vegan, so good job, baby. Eh, what the fuck? There we go. Okay, so here we have it. To me, it just looks like a lipstick. I mean, a really pretty shade of lipstick that I would totally rock. Ooh, and it has no smell. Thank you. But this actually does look a lot like the lipstick that I use, so hold on just a second. Okay, I have no idea where the fuck my Wet n Wild one went. I think I may have actually given it to my neighbor. But I do have this brandless one, which is quite a bit more dusty and kind of yellowy. Like, if I were gonna wear this as a lipstick, I would definitely choose this one. But I kind of want to do a test, like, side by side and see how different this is from a liquid lipstick. Like, I don't want to be a shady bitch like that, but at the same time, I myself am curious, and I know a lot of people are too, so we might as well. Let me just swatch this on my finger. Ooh, that has a really nice buttery and kind of creamy consistency. Very, very thick. Ooh, she has some really good coverage. Wow. It seems to be spreading out awesomely and drying down really nicely too. Like, it's not tacky or sticky at all. Let me just take this lipstick next to it and see if it acts the same way, because if it doesn't, then I'm just gonna skip the lipstick. Actually, that does feel very, very similar in texture. It's rubbing out the same, too. <laughs> Rub out. <laughs> yeah, um... Hmm. Okay, so there we have Nikita's. It feels great on the skin, at least from what I can tell. And then here we have the lipstick. It feels the exact same. What if I could use this as a lipstick? Oh my god, that feels so good on my lips. Oh, damn. Oh, it doesn't taste good, though. It kind of tastes like that film that's on top of milk when you get it really hot. Huh. But it is totally dried down on my lips now. It actually feels just like a moisturizing liquid lipstick. And I don't think it looks half bad on the lips, either. Hmm, okay. Also, I'm so sorry if you see any glitter on my face. I had glitter on my eyes, like, three days ago, and it's still all over me. Anyways, there is that. Even if it's not a good color corrector, I'm okay with it as a lipstick. Still not sure that it's a $25 lipstick, but okay. Now, Next here we have the Dragon Beauty Dragon Heart Transformation Powder, which retails for $35. This product I actually don't really know anything about, so let me go to the website and see the description. It adheres amazingly to skin with creamy buildable formulation, conditions skin with emollients and specifically formulated polymers to increase wear and glide, brightens skin with subtle amounts of glowing pigments and pearls. Does that mean it's like a highlighter? Lustrous, luminous, luxurious blend and build your ultimate face filter fantasy with a formulation infused with light refracting pigments and pearls for a glamorously glowy, beautifully brightened look. But what is this for? Is it setting powder? I don't know. Let's open this up and see. It does have a really nice weight to it. Like, this bitch is kind of heavy. <gasps> oh, that packaging is pretty. Actually just did a sheet mask last night that looked similar to this. But yes, here we have it on the back. Oh, it's got like a pink to green shift to it. Oh, if anything, I'll just put this thing in the window because that bitch is pretty. And here we go. Oh, it's got a nice big ass mirror. Huh, that 
does not look very expensive. This is $35. Like it kind of feels expensive because it has a nice weight to it, but just going off that, $35, really. This kind of reminds me of something that I'd find at like Claire's or something. Do they even have makeup anymore? Anyways, let's kind of feel what this is like. It's just a basic like banana powder. What about the pink one? It's just a pink powder. All right. I don't know what am I supposed to do with this I wonder if maybe you're supposed to use the pink like all over the face and then the yellow maybe like under the eyes like I do have some Ben Nye banana powder that I use under my eyes but I guess I also have some pink tone powder for under the eyes too to help brighten huh okay maybe there's a video or something as Tati reviewed it I like Tati like usual I have not looked up any reviews or anything for these products but I'm gonna have to for this because I don't know what to use this for $35 though really oh yes Patrick Star was the first one to come up I love you babe Maybe. Oh, Patrick is fucking gorgeous. But it looks like it's just a brightening powder, which I actually don't really have many of those. I just have one from Kat Von D and I'm kind of running on drags. And quite honestly, I fucking love brightening powders, especially when I'm doing like drag makeup or wanting something super dramatic. So I might end up actually really liking this. <gasps> oh, yay, it has one of these. Oh, oh, I love that. Okay, let me just kind of wipe this lipstick stuff off. That was a really nice ass lipstick, damn. But let's go ahead and smear this on my face. This says a little bit glows a long way, start light, Build and blend to your desired result. Application areas include under the eyes, around the nose, near jawline, and smile lines. When applied, give your product a moment to set. It will stay in place and not mix in with your foundation. Oh, I love to hear that. So I am not wearing any makeup today. Should I prime? Maybe kind of like a lightweight primer. So I'm gonna go in with this Becca First Light Priming Filter. I think this might be shimmery. I don't know if I've ever used this, but we'll give it a little bit of a try. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Oh, this is a good sign. Doesn't Nikita have purple hair? Oh God, I forgot that was on my hand. I was like. Like, who shit on me? Let's take that off. Okay, so as promised, I do want to see if using this liquid lipstick is any different than using Nikita's. And so on this side, I'll use Nikita's. And then on this side, I'll use the other lipstick. I have no idea where I got this, but I've used this in conjunction with my Wet n Wild one multiple times. And they're like the exact same formula. But here we go with Nikita's. I'll do a little bit right under the eye. Is that too much? And then let's do some under the smile lines. And then I am going to get rid of my eyebrows. But I do want to start with this so it can be drying while I glue down my eyebrows. So here here we go with this. I'm just gonna blend it out with my Jeffree Star Morphe JS3 brush. Woo, bitch has pigmentation. Damn. I guess that did an okay job of like correcting my under eye. It did kind of make it a little bit darker though. I can't really tell. What do you think? This side versus this side? I don't know. But it blended out fabulously. It feels super lightweight. Let me just apply a teeny tiny bit more right under my eye. I don't want to go in too heavy, but I feel like it's still a little bit discolored. So I'm just gonna tap that. Actually, my under eye just keeps getting darker and darker. Like right there. Holy shit. It's like I got a black eye. But as to how it feels on the skin, I think it's super comfortable. So I will let that dry down. Let me go ahead and apply this to the other side and I'm just gonna blend it out with this brush. I don't even know where the fuck I got this from. It looks like a damn unicorn. It's adorable. This one might actually be way too dark. Oh, shit. But it too seems to be blending out pretty effortlessly. I mean, oh my God. God, I look weird. Like a carrot who got beaten up by a street gang. I don't know, I mean, both sides to me look super dark underneath my eyes. I'm gonna take away all my filters and everything so that you're seeing what I'm seeing and you let me know what you think. Ready? Bing! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we think? It's super dark, I know, I'm sorry. But I think both sides look great, I mean... Yeah, they both feel the same, like they're super duper comfortable. Just looking at them, I do think Nikita's side looks a little bit drier, like more adhered to my skin. Let me do like I did on Nikita's and add a teeny tiny bit more right there. And there we go. I'm gonna let these kind of chill and gel out and dry down completely while I glue down my brows. Oh my god, it's the most blowing I've had all year. <laughs> okay, so usually when I'm doing like a drag look, I will go ahead and set these brows with a powder. So I think I kind of want to dip into one of these. Ooh, that picks up very nicely. I'm just going to kind of press that into there. I know people think there's some huge taboo with putting cream products over powder, but honey, drag queens have been doing it for ages and they look fucking great, so check yourself. But I do understand that this product might be affected by the powder, so I'm really glad that we put this underneath there to see how that does. And 
believe that powder actually has some pretty good pigment to it as well. I could probably use another layer of glue, but I think I should be okay. So let me dust away any powder excess. All right, those feel pretty good. So let's go ahead and put some Nikita right there. And I don't really want to disrupt my brow, so I'm just going to kind of tap it. Oh my gosh, that is so pigmented. Damn. Like it actually is doing a pretty good job of covering up like the purpley blue tones from my brow. No, it's not completely covered, but oh my God, that's a million times better. All right, there we go. I'm going to let that side dry. Let's apply this lipstick to the other side. That too does seem to have pretty good coverage, but I think because it's darker, it didn't really do that great of a job of covering the blue tone. But yes, yeah, so there we go. I'm going to let these both dry. In fact, maybe I'll put a blow dryer on them just to be safe. And I'm going to use it on the cool setting because I don't want any heat to alter this in any way. Mm. Here we are though, before I apply any foundation, I think both sides look equally ridiculous. So let's go ahead and apply foundation. And for that, oh, what do I want to use? I was going to use these new Wet n Wild Photo Focus sticks because I love their liquid foundation, but I don't think I want to try something new. I think I want to try something that I'm used to. And I'm sure everybody is fucking sick and tired of seeing this on my channel, but it is my all time favorite. This is Dior's Backstage in the shade 2.5N. And this does have pretty decent coverage on its own. Oh, let's apply that right there. And, um, it kind of looks like it might be melting. I can't really tell because this foundation is kind of on the orangey side. Shit. Actually, I can see that it's coming off because there's some on the edge of my sponge here. Well, I don't know what you're seeing, but what I'm seeing is that it is kind of melty and it's kind of blending in with my foundation and it kind of melted right off my eyebrow there. And so now my eyebrow is back to being its normal color. Oh, damn. Now my foundation is like so super dark and super orange. Let me just make sure that's not the color of my foundation because it totally might be no, there is a clear difference between this and that. Do you see that? With the clean side of the sponge, I'm gonna start working on this half of my face, which I kind of think this side is melting off as well. I mean, it doesn't look really, really bad. It's just orange and a little bit like spray tan, but like not good spray tan. Honestly, neither side is doing that great of a job, but I really hope that you can see the difference. Like this side, it did melt away. I guess my under eyes look Look better, but I'm still gonna need a concealer. This side certainly does not look that great. Oh my god. Okay, you know what? This application is too fucked up. I need a brush and I'm just gonna go all over my face with it. I didn't really want to use a brush because I was afraid it would disrupt things, but this is just way too uneven and I need something like clear to look at. So maybe with a second layer and kind of stippling this in, that'll help cover things up and even things out. Which when it comes to color correcting, if I have to apply two layers of the foundation, I'm not mad at it because more often than not, even when I'm not color correcting, I'll still have to apply two layers anyway. Here we have it. I think I look fine. I mean, a little bit crazy, but when don't I look a little bit crazy? I am going to take the filter off again, just so that you guys can see what I look like. Ready? Here we go. So this is what we have. I don't think either really did that great of a job of covering. I mean, this side does look good, but I kind of like this side better. What do you think? Keep in mind that we haven't added any concealer yet, but now that everything's kind of mixed out and like my whole face is the same shade of orange, I don't think it looks bad. And now that I'm looking at my eyebrows, the lipstick side does kind of have a little bit of red peeking through, whereas Nikita's side, there is nothing peeking through. At least not that I can see or not like a huge amount. And so even though Nikita's did kind of end up melting, when it comes to the eyebrows, I think I actually prefer hers, but under the eyes, I think they're both kind of the same. If we're being honest, I would probably never use either of these on my eyebrows. I mean, I have a way better methods of covering them up that looks so much better, but let's go ahead and add our concealer sealer. And for that, I'm going on the light side. This is my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop in the shade Vanilla. And I'm also going to take some of that on the brows as well. But so far, even though I'm not totally sold on this product, I could see how it could be very, very helpful for people with stubble. I'm going to put one more little layer of this NYX right here. Usually, if I'm going to cover up my eyebrows, I use a really, really, really thick concealer. Oh my goodness. I actually like the normal lipstick side better. Like, I can't see as much of my eyebrow. And I'm not 1,000 
100% sure, but from what I understand, this isn't a setting powder, so I guess I'll go ahead and apply a setting powder under my eyes. And for this, I'm just using Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder, and I guess I'll just leave it there in case any black falls down. Just rest that gently right there to keep any creasing from happening. Ooh, look at that. I look like a fucking superhero with a mask on. Super gay. Y'all have to let me know down in the comments below if you would be a superhero, what would your name be? Okay, let me go ahead and dust away the powder from my eyebrows. I am gonna leave the powder underneath my eyes. And to prime my eyes, I'm gonna go in with this Kat Von D color correcting stick. Now to start this look, I'm gonna take this Rimmel pencil and just draw it all over the eyelid. Oh, fuck. The bitch broke. Where did it go? Oh, God, I'm wearing new pants. What the hell? Where did it go? God, I'm gonna find it on Ron's paw all over my couch. Okay, well, let's try this again. I'm just gonna put this all over the eyelid. And I'm gonna kind of shape it over my crease because I do want kind of a dramatic look. And then with a clean, fluffy brush, I'm just gonna start blending those edges out. And then with that same brush, I'm gonna dip into a black and just kind of set it on the lid and then start to smoke those edges out. I know this is looking very, very crazy. Trust me, we're gonna get even wilder. Just keep blending this. And then on these kind of weird looks, I always like to drag out a little bit of a tail to really elongate the eyes. But I'm going for kind of like an avant-garde editorial look mixed with like 90s street fashion grunge. Oh. Then with a clean, floofy brush, I'm gonna dip into this Pat McGrath palette. Which one is this? The Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation palette. And I'm gonna dip into this beautiful brown right here. And I'm just gonna kind of smoke that out along the upper edges here. And the shitty thing about blacks is that in person, they look so beautiful and blended, but then on camera, they just don't. And I totally forgot about that until now. But hopefully this looks somewhat okay. Like in person, this looks so cool. For the lower lash, I'm gonna start with a little bit more of this Rimmel and I'm gonna take it all along the waterline. And with the line, I'm just gonna kind of connect each corner. I'm really trying to turn this into like an everyday kind of wearable look. You know, like if you run out of condoms and you have to go to the quickie mart down the road, you know, just slap something simple and super cash on. And then I'm just gonna smoke this out with a clean pencil brush. Honestly, I know this is kind of a weird look, but to me, this is like something that I'd wear every day. Like walk the streets like they're the runway with this look. Woo. For lipstick, I'm going in with this Hank and Henry in the shade at 1985. Oh my god, this smells like sex and birthday cake. Mmm. And then I'm also gonna mix that with a little bit of the shade of Liquor Liquor. Oh my god. God, but I love these lipsticks. Fuck. I cannot get this part to not be patchy. Damn it. Yeah, whatever. We just won't look at that side. Then before I go ahead and apply my false lashes, I'm gonna apply a little bit of this ColourPop So Juicy Clear Lip Gloss to my lids. Hopefully it won't take everything away. That would kind of be a bummer if it did. And no, I think we're good. Oh, fuck. This lip gloss is like minty. My eyes are tingly. It's like Santa Claus's sperm on my eyelids. All right, so here we are with the final look. It's not perfect. Only RuPaul's perfect but it's acceptable for today. So let's go ahead and try this brightening powder underneath my eyes. So I'm gonna take this kind of fluffier brush and I don't know, should I use the yellow or the peach? Let me try the peachy one on my forehead and it picks up very, very well. Just place that right, oh, damn. That definitely does do some brightening, holy shit. And I think it does have a little bit of reflection in it. I can't quite tell. God, hopefully it blends out cause it's just like right there. It does seem to be blending out, but it also does look very, very cakey on my forehead. Or maybe not necessarily cakey, just super dry. I don't know if you can see that. I definitely like the way it looks, at least on camera. It's just really close up that it doesn't look the best. But let me just keep trying to blend it out because that might be the issue. Maybe I just put too much on right there. I actually don't think that looks bad. Like, it clearly added a bit of brightness. Let me try the yellow one underneath my eyes right there. Ooh, that looks good. Let's try it over here. It is totally adding brightness. Holy fuck. I mean, I don't know that it's any more dramatic than any other brightening powder, but it is doing what it's claiming to, which is adding brightness. What if I can use some of the pink on top of that too? Like, can you add too much brightening powder? Oh, god damn, that one is way too fucking bright. Jeez. Oh, that was a very bad decision. Oh God, let's see if I can kind of kick some of that back. No, that stuff is stuck on there. Holy fuck balls. Okay, I definitely prefer the yellow underneath the eyes. Maybe I can add a little bit more and try to tame that. No, it's just getting worse. These are very, very, very bright. 
so bright they're borderline like chalky. Now I just look redonkulous. Not that I didn't before, but now I just look extra redonkulous. Let me go ahead and try to even that out with a little bit of whatever's left on my bronzer brush. Damn, that did brighten, but it definitely made a lot of texture underneath my eyes. So if you have drier skin, I don't think I would use this because it is really gonna accentuate that. I don't know what to do to like get rid of some of it. But if I'm being honest, I don't know that I would really ever use this in like my everyday life. I'm more attracted to this from like a drag aspect because usually for me, like whatever concealer I use is enough brightening. And so I guess if you're the kind of person that doesn't really like to use a lighter concealer or concealer at all, but you want a little bit of brightness under your eyes, then this would be good. But make sure you use it very, very sparingly because it quickly builds up and it looks really cakey and dry. Like, I don't know if you can see it under there, but it really added some texture. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world World, but oh my god, that side is really, really highlighted. I do not think it's worth the price at all, but I do think it's a good product. Is it revolutionary? No, not at all. It's just a brightening powder. And it is quite mattifying and drying. I don't know if it would have been any different had I used it as a setting powder, but that would really scare me. Like, I feel like this is way too pigmented to be used as a setting powder unless you have the perfect skin color. Oh my god. The fuck is happening right there. It does do what it said it was going to do. It did brighten. Do I recommend it? I don't know, because it is kind of pricey. If it didn't make my skin look so dry, which even that is kind of weird to me because my skin, it doesn't feel dry. Like it feels super soft. And I think they said this is infused with a bunch of different things to make your skin soft. And so I don't get why it looks dry. Hold up. We're going to take all the filters off just like that. And I'm going to go way close up. Do you see everything that's happening down there? Maybe it doesn't look bad to you, but to me, it just looks a bit dry. Not terrible, not awful, but it's definitely very, very, very textured, and it's normally not textured right there. Oh my god. God, and look at that. Ugh, it's such a bummer. Normally when I lay down my eyebrows, they look so good. Not today though, it was a fun day to play and experiment with makeup, so I'm very happy for that. Let's go ahead and do a wear time test, so I will see you in just a second. And we are back, we just hit like the three-ish hour mark, and I wanted to wear this for longer, but the peppermint feeling on my eyes has actually not let up, and so they're very, very cold feeling. And I haven't really seen anything change over time, so I think I'm ready to give my final verdict. So regarding this little bitch right here, I'm kind of torn because it made a beautiful lipstick. It did kind of do some covering up, but really no more than that lipstick did. Like if I had to pick between sides, I don't think one is really better than the other, but I kind of prefer this one. I don't think this did anything for covering up my eyebrows. In fact, I think they look way worse than when I don't use something like this. And even though this eye is kind of patchy and sucks, I think the lipstick actually worked better. On me, I think they both lifted up but if I had to choose which didn't lift up as much, I would probably say the lipstick. I just don't think it's worth $25. That lipstick that I had was like at most a dollar and I honestly think it felt the same. I know it wasn't the same in color, but I think performance wise, they both did pretty equally. If you're looking for a color corrector and you've got a bit of money to blow, I mean, I guess you could go for it, but I don't really think that this is anything super special or out of this world to justify the price. It made a really pretty lipstick. It did kind of even things out, but is it something that that I'm gonna reach for very often? Probably not. This brightening kit though, I actually really like this despite the fact that it does kind of accentuate whatever dryness you have. And even if you don't have dryness, you will have to use this. I'm not sure what's in it, but it just seems to suck up any moisture. With that being said though, it does do a great job at brightening. I don't know that I'll ever reach for these for like normal makeup, but when I'm doing drag makeup, holy fuck, these are gonna be all over me. If you're looking for brightening powders and you use these very, very sparingly, I think you'd be really happy with them. Let me see if maybe a setting spray helps. I mean, now that we're at the end of the fucking review. Mm, no, they do still look kind of on the dry side. I mean, I keep looking at this and I totally fucked up this side because I added that really, really bright one. So I do really prefer that side. But even with the dryness, I do still think they did a pretty good job. I don't know that I'd say they're worth $35. Maybe like 20. If they didn't dry out my under eyes though, I probably would say that they're worth the price. But I spend a lot of time trying not to look aged under my eyes and this definitely doesn't help. Like, I get that it's brightening things up, which does kind of make you look younger and more youthful, but at the same time, because it's so dry, 
cry, it's like accentuating any fine line, so I don't know what the fuck to think. I'm gonna let you decide what the final verdict is on this. I mean, you could see it up close, you saw it without the filters. I think if you're looking for brightening powders and she ends up having a sale, then I would snag these, but definitely not for $35. Sadly, what I think I'm most bummed out about is the way this egg looks like online. It looks so pretty, I thought it was velvet. And I got it hoping to display on my makeup shelf, but it's like a Smurf Easter Bunny shout out an egg. Please let me know down in the comments below if you think like my under eyes look any better than they normally do with just concealer. I really don't know. Like I don't think they do, but maybe they do. I <laughs> Like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepopflix.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below, let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepopflix.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all and I will see you again soon. Bye.